Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Heartscapes. It is a beautiful, blustery pre-spring morning, and today I am out in the garden, which is, of course, my favorite place to be on a lovely pre-spring morning. I don't know if you can hear that wind. It is quite blustery today. But today, I wanted to share a video with you about these little friends. About a year ago, I made a video that was a little bit random for my channel. It was essentially a product review of the garden tower and the green stock. Two different variations of a tower garden. And for those of you who found my channel through that video, and there were many of you, uh, that, that video has far and away more views than anything else I've put on this channel, um, you might have been surprised to realize that for the most part, my channel um, is a place where I talk about practicing the system of Reiki and energy work in general, wellness, healing practices, and the histories involved with those practices. And those of you who were here for those purposes might have been surprised to find this garden-related review. Um, but I do a lot of work out here in the garden, and it just felt like um, something that was worth sharing because a lot of people were asking me about these um, two items that I had picked up uh, early on in 2020. It was like kind of part of my pandemic response was to jump way back into gardening. I'm gardening in Davis, California, so in the Central Valley of California, on um, a smallish suburban lot, so not a huge amount of space, um, but it is my intention to cram as much food products into this space as possible, and so I was exploring uh, vertical gardening as one of those ways. And um, I did this product review of these two um, right at the beginning of using them made some predictions about which one I might like better. And uh, a lot of folks asked me to do a follow-up to share, well, what did I learn? What did I determine? And it's taken me almost a year to circle back to making that video. And this is it. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you after a year of use, which of these two products I personally find the most value in for my purposes. There is a clear winner for my purposes. Um, and I want to put that disclaimer on there. Even in the one that I personally did not get as much value from, there are specific gardening um, applications that are different than mine that I think it actually would be a really valuable product. So I'll talk about that. Um, and there was one that was clearly uh, had high value for me. In fact, I've made purchased several more um, since making that video. So I'm going to go over the reasons why that is. And I'm also going to share a idea that I've had for the one that I did not like as much that I think might redeem it and one that you might find interesting to try as well. So first I want to start by saying that both of these products, the green stock planter and the garden tower, are both made in the U.S. using very high quality materials and very sturdy, very well made. And both of them incorporate a specific design feature, a different one for each product, that's intended to solve the two major design problems with this kind of product. Um, there are many garden, you know, stacked garden products out there on the market, and all of them struggle with two specific problems. One, inconsistent watering. When you have a tall vertical um, item, it's, it's difficult to get consistent watering from the top to the bottom. And soil fertility. So you have a very closed system where um, you have a lot of plants crammed into essentially a tall pot. Um, and, and generally with these, you're putting way more plants in there than you typically would in a, another type of garden pot. And so those plants run through the nutrients in the soil very quickly. And replacing those nutrients is essential for success with this kind of product, um, which generally means you're using a lot of fertilizer, a lot of liquid fertilizer, things like that. Um, but so one of these products 
put in a design feature to try to mitigate that challenge. Um, and so we'll talk a bit about that. Um, in that first video, I went into a lot more detail about the design on these two. So I'll try to keep that more brief in this one and just kind of get to the results. First though, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna start with the one that uh, did not work as well for me, that um, I did not feel that I had as much success as I would have liked. You wanna know which one that was? Let's take a look. It is the garden tower. So, as you can see, I primarily have strawberries in here right now. Um, but over the course of the past year, I tried many different um, plants. Uh, from melons trailing out of the bottom, to peppers, to greens, <clears throat> and a lot of strawberries. And all of them struggled for me. Um, and I want to just kind of break down why I think there was a struggle and uh, what some of the possible solutions could be. And again, I want to share the disclaimer that I believe that most of these problems are solvable and clearly people have because there's a lot of information on this product that, that demonstrates a successful use of it. And so I know that there is a certain amount of like user error and learning curve, um, and also just not a great fit for my particular uses. So let's talk about it. So this particular product attempted to solve the problem of soil fertility. And it did that in an interesting way by incorporating a composting tube. And you can see there is uh, some compost in there. So this tube runs all the way down the center of the tower and you put your food scraps in there and you put some red worms in there and it runs all the way down and the compost can be harvested down there. Um, it also collects um, the water runoff, which can be used as compost tea. And um, that gives you kind of an ongoing source of um, compost and soil fertility. Now, the way that I thought this worked when I read about this and decided to try it out I thought that what happens or what's supposed to happen is that the plant roots would grow into that tower through the holes that are per, through, all throughout and directly feed off the compost. Um, so that in other words, it would, that it would be a passive source of nutrients for the plants and that like my role would mainly be to be um, keeping up with, with the compost and then harvesting it when it was all done. However, when I purchased the product and read the instructions thoroughly. That is not how it's intended to work. In fact, you're supposed to harvest this compost regularly enough that the, the roots of the plants do not grow into that tube. Um, you, you're, you don't want that to happen. And so you're supposed to be keeping up with this quite regularly, feeding it very frequently so that the compost builds up quickly and then harvesting it every couple of months. Now, and then feeding that compost back into the product by uh, show you here, tucking it into the the uh, pockets for the plants. Now, two challenges that I found with that. Firstly, it's kind of a pain to harvest that compost. Uh, it's you know, messy and gross, and uh, you actually have to fish the worms back out of the compost. Um, so you have to kind of dig all through it, find the worms, put them back into the tower. Um, which, you know, it's not a big deal, uh, but you're doing that regularly. And what I found is that because I have a fairly large garden, um, both in the backyard and the front yard, that requires, of course, a lot of work and maintenance, that that was just kind of a level of, of like repeated tasks that I didn't, that just didn't work in my schedule. Um, you know, working full time and tending this garden. It just, it just didn't work for me to do that consistently. Um, the other challenge with that, even if I did stay consistent with that process, the challenge that I found, and this is going into the design of this being, I think not quite there. Let me, because you have that center column going down the middle, 
this product is not modular, meaning this is an entire column of soil. And these pockets are just a shell on the outside. So you can see that here. It's just a shell on the outside. This is all one column of soil, basically one large planter. And because all of that soil is pushing up against these small openings, as you can see here, there's very little room as all of that soil is pushing. And if I put my fingers like this is as far as I can go uh, before just hitting that column of soil. So there's very little room in each of these pockets to put, you know, to top dress compost. There's almost no space at all to add compost to these. Um, and then once, you know, plants fill out bigger, if I had something bigger than strawberries, you definitely would not have room to get the compost in there. Um, similarly, because the soil is pressing up against each pocket, if you go to water it through the pocket, it just erodes the soil right out. And that brings us to that second challenge with vertical gardens, which is the inconsistent watering. So with this one, the garden tower, you pretty much do water it from the top and that water trickles down. And as I said, it does collect the concentrated water at the bottom, which is a pretty nice compost tea that you can then put back into the garden. Often I would just water it back into the tower to help with the fertility. Um, but that doesn't uh, do a great job watering, especially the plants at the bottom. And so what I would try to do is water those individual pockets. But again, with the soil being the way that it is pressing right up against the pockets, it would erode soil out and not much water would be absorbed. So consistent watering was a challenge for me on this product. Um, on the Garden Tower website and blog, there are a lot of um, resources and articles about kind of dealing with these different aspects of it. And I did try some different techniques and I just, I just couldn't quite get a good rhythm uh, with tending this well. And so I had a lot of crop failure in this product. Very little actually worked well. These strawberries were what tended to work the best. Um, and so it's working decent as a strawberry tower, but honestly... You know, strawberries are easy to grow in a lot of ways. To me, that's not worth the investment of a fairly expensive product. This is the more expensive of the two. So for those reasons, the inconsistent watering, the erosion of the soil when watering, the difficulty actually making use of the design feature of the compost tube, and the result that the whole um, garden ended up struggling with water and fertility issues for me, made this not a great product for me. Now, I did say that there would be contexts in which this actually could be the right product. Um, and it's actually the context that this is mostly, most specifically marketed for, which is the patio garden. If you're in a situation like an apartment or you know a, a some sort of home where you've got very limited space or no garden space at all if all you've got is a balcony outside of uh, an apartment this actually would be a fantastic garden first of all because you're not tending a whole bunch of other garden space you probably could devote the kind of time and care and effort necessary to maintain that composting system really well because that would basically be your gardening tasks, right? That would be where you're focusing your time and your effort when it comes to your garden. And so in that sort of case, I can definitely imagine being able to manage that system effectively and in a way that allows that feature to to really shine and to do what it's intended to do that just was not my situation i've got way too much to do with everything else in this garden uh as i look over at my chickens staring at me because i haven't fed them yet it was another garden task um, that just did not work for me just the the kind of micromanaging necessary to make that composting system work um did not work but again if this is your primary garden and this is where you're going to put your gardening efforts, I can actually imagine that working really well. And so for a patio garden, for a garden where this is, this is it, this is what you are putting your attention into, I think this actually would be a really good product. Now, <clears throat> I've said that there was an idea that I've had recently 
that might just redeem this product for me because I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? I don't really enjoy gardening with it. Should I sell it? Should I, you know, what should I do with this? And I recently had an idea that I think could actually make this really fabulous for my uses and possibly for your uses as well. But I'm going to get back to that at the end. First, let's take a look at the green stock. So here we have one of my three green stocks, as you can see, also planted with strawberries. Um, you might also notice that these strawberries are doing uh, much better than the ones we were just looking at. Um, it's bigger, fuller, they're already starting to fruit. Um, and that just says a lot about the overall, um, the, the way in which this product is just working better for me. I'm getting better results from this. Uh, this one's full of strawberries because I bought one specifically to use for strawberries because I just liked it that much. The price point on this one is much less and so it, it made sense to invest in it for that purpose because we do want to have a lot of strawberries. So let's talk a little bit about the features of this one. Um, there are two different versions as well as a lot of different colors. Um, this one is called the Leaf and it has relatively short pockets. You see that's about a, I don't know, about an eight inch depth pocket. And then there's the original, which has these, um, I think almost 12 inch pockets, so much deeper. And so you would use this one for um, plants that, you know, need a deeper root system, your peppers, tomatoes, um, you know, melons coming off the bottom, kind of your more uh, robust garden produce. And you would use this one specifically for things like greens, um, flowers, things that need a more shallow root system. Um, I know a lot of people who use this specifically like for their salad garden. Um, and it works pretty well for strawberries. It, it actually, they actually do recommend that you use the deeper pockets for strawberries. Um, but I'm just taking care to make sure that I top dress with compost often and they're doing really well in this version. So let's talk about those two challenges that vertical gardens have, consistent watering and soil fertility. So the design feature that the green stock um, went with, and, and by the way, I'll just mention that the, the company that invented and runs green stock, it's a small family business, um, U.S. made. Um, they just they have really great business ethics. Um, I've had to work with their customer service a couple times on a product that was misshipped and just super friendly, um, excellent customer service, like just a really great company to work with. So I think that matters. I wanted to mention it. So the green stock attempts to and attempts and succeeds at addressing the watering issue. So as you can see, there's this basin here at the top. And this is where you put the water in. It's a total mess right now because it's been so windy. But you can see there's a hole in the center. I don't know, can you see? The lighting is not great here right now. Let's see if I can get a better shot. That isn't necessarily better, but anyway, we'll carry on. So you've got a hole here in the center and around the outside at each of these um, pockets, this is just above each of the pockets, there is another hole. And so you fill this with water and of course it starts going down the small holes and as soon as it's watered far enough to come up to the center, it starts dropping water down the center. This center hole leads to a channel. So it's now watering this pot through the side holes. Water is also going down the central channel which connects to these. The next pot. So inside here can't see it, but in there, there's another tray. Well, you can kind of see it right there, that gray tray in there, um, that has the same assembly. You've got holes around the outside and one in the center. Same thing, the, one, the holes are on the outside, water this pocket, and down the center, it drops water into the next pocket, and so on and so on and so on, all the way down to the bottom, where then there's a tube that feeds the excess water out that you can redirect to a container or another part of the garden. And this works beautifully for consistent watering. Um, by the time you have filled up this basin, like just with your hose or a large watering can, you have put in the correct amount of water to consistently water this whole tower um, every time. Now I live, as I said, in, the Central Valley in California. We're in drought country. 
it gets extremely hot during the summer. And so I always just give it a little extra water out here with the pockets. But unlike the garden tower, um, you can very successfully water each pocket because each of these pots is essentially a separate unit. So this is a self-contained pot with just the hole down the center for the water. And these can actually be removed if you need to, um, which makes it much easier to, you know, clean out soil, swap it out, move the whole thing somewhere else if you want. Um, but it also means that there's the space between the top of the soil and the next pot. Very easy to just get your hand in there and feed some compost or feed some water. So you can easily water them at each pocket and you can easily top dress it with compost without eroding the soil out of there or having to dig around in there, you know, whatever kind of strategy for getting the compost in that we had to do with our friend over there. So for both of those reasons, I was able to keep the, both the watering and the fertility where I needed to be throughout the entire season. Now, this one I used quite extensively. And as you can see, the kale that I grew in here over the winter um, stayed relatively small, um, which tells me that I probably am at the point where this one is starting to have some fertility challenges. And so um, probably the ideal thing to do would be to take this apart again, which is not difficult because it just snaps apart at each level and completely replace the soil and just start fresh. Um, that would probably be a good idea. Uh, however, I'm probably not going to do that quite yet um, because I'm all out of compost um, and this takes a lot of soil. So rather than purchase a whole new set of soil, I am probably just going to top dress again, feed it with liquid fertilizer throughout the season. And then in the fall, when my big batch of compost is done, is probably when I will refresh that completely. But uh, I just wanted to point that out, that it's not that uh, you won't run into those problems with the, the green stock. Um, it certainly does have that consistent challenge of keeping the fertility where you need it to be um, in this incredibly enclosed, concentrated growing system. Much easier to deal with that issue on this product than on that one. So I had to come over here under a tree because the sun just peeked up above and got right up in my face and I was afraid I was blinding you all with it. Um, so uh, just in short, uh, for my purposes, um, it, for a variety of reasons, I prefer the green stock. For the price point, which is very reasonable for the product, um, for the way it addresses those two challenges of water inconsistency and soil fertility, for the ease of dealing with um, managing it, maintaining it, and for its overall beauty. It's a really nice looking product with a lot of colors available. Um, I prefer that product. I will share that if you would like to try out the green stock, um, I am not affiliated with the company. I am not sponsored by the company uh, or connected with them in any way. Um, however, one of my favorite YouTube channels and gardening teachers, um, Roots and Refuge Farm, which Ah, I'm wearing their sweater here. Um, they are affiliated with them. That's how I learned about them in the first place. And they offer a coupon code uh, that is good at any time for products um, from Greenstock. And so I will put a link to their channel down below uh, so that you can check them out and you can use their coupon code, which is ROOTS10, R-O-O-T-S, 10, um, as a coupon code at Greenstock, good at any time. Um, they also run sales throughout the year that you can add that coupon code to. Um, that makes it just a very affordable product. Okay, now I promised that I would share a idea that I had for redeeming our friend, oh, where is it? Redeeming our friend, the garden tower. So let's talk about that. So I mentioned that one of the challenges that I had with this product is based on the fact that it is one continuous column of soil. That this is essentially one big open column. If there was no soil in here, we'd be looking all the way down to the bottom and that that caused various challenges. However, 
part of, you know, being a savvy gardener or a savvy anything is to figure out ways to turn our challenges into benefits. Um, and I think I have an idea that will help with that. So what we're looking at here is a mushroom inoculated log. And I recently did um, a workshop at Brown Sugar Farms in uh, Sacramento, which I will link down below for you local folks on mushroom cultivation. And which is something that I've dabbled in and, um, you know, I had various levels of luck and I'm just ready to kind of up level that. And so one of the things that we talked about in that workshop is the fact that some mushrooms, um, in particular oyster mushrooms and wine cap mushrooms, actually grow really, really well in, um, in a, a medium of straw rather than solid wood. Uh, the log we were just looking at there is inoculated with shiitake, um, but wine caps and oysters and some certain other varieties actually grow really, really well in straw. And what that means is there's a lot of flexibility in how you can cultivate them. And one way that is recommended that works really, really well is to grow them vertically, to put them in some kind of tower, some kind of vertical structure. Um, you can get very creative with that. Uh, they recommended using an old laundry basket, which, you know, of course has holes throughout it. Um, you can use one of those, uh, compost bins that's made of like flexible plastic with holes all throughout it which actually kind of suck as uh compost bins they don't work super well for that but could work really well for this as long as you keep it out of the sun so it doesn't get too hot um basically what you're looking for is something that is <laughs> hello luna luna's gonna help us with our mushroom education um something that provides an enclosed vertical space that has a series of holes um, along the body of it that the mushrooms can fruit out of. You fill that with hay that's been inoculated with your mushroom spore, you keep it watered, you keep it in a shady spot, and if all things go according to plan, uh, you'll get a lovely crop over many months or even years um, of mushroom fruiting out of those holes. So when I learned that at this workshop, you know, my mind started spinning of what do I have on hand um, besides a old laundry basket <clears throat> that could foot this bill that could serve this purpose. And I'm sure you can guess what I came up with. Yep, I came back to our friend, the garden tower. <clears throat> because as you now know, we have a vertical column a vertical open space that has consistent even holes on all sides. And if I clean out all of that soil, repot uh, the plants elsewhere, disinfect it really well, uh, because there's inevitably various fungus and bacteria already living in there, as is always the case with soil. And fill it instead with inoculated straw, move it to a shady patch, probably back there on the other side of this arbor where there's a wall and it's shady. This is the north side of the garden. Uh, I think this will actually work beautifully for this purpose. The other idea I'd had was to use it to grow potatoes because similarly, uh, potatoes grow well, um, at least indeterminate varieties of potatoes grow well in a vertical space, layering straw or hay on top to um, extend the plant and get more potatoes. That's what I'm doing right here with this cage. Um, but honestly, you know, potatoes are uh, super cheap to buy. They're super easy to grow in a variety of ways. It just didn't seem worth it to dedicate something this expensive and something this specific to growing potatoes. So the mushroom idea though, feels very exciting and very alive because mushrooms are expensive. Mushrooms are a little bit challenging to grow in your home garden. Mushrooms are very specific. They're very um, high value crops, both in terms of my use and in terms of sharing and trading with other people. And so I suspect that this garden tower is gonna become 
one of my mushroom gardens. And in that way is going to redeem itself for not working particularly well for me as a regular vertical garden. So that's my idea. I will definitely make a follow-up video about that. At least I will if it works. If it totally fails, maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, no promises on when that will happen. As you can see, it took me a full year to get back around to um, this update on that first video. Um, but I hope that you found this useful. I hope that you are able to take into consideration your own specific gardening situation, thinking about which of these products might serve you really well. Again, if your situation is that, you you know, what you have to garden on is a patio in an apartment or, um, you know, concrete space where there really isn't any gardening, um, the, I think the, the garden tower could actually work really well for you. Um, it just did not work well for me in my specific circumstance. I will link to both of these products down below. You can check them out, do your own research on them. And um, again, I will link to Roots and Refuge Farm so you can check out their channel. I learn a ton from Jess over there. And again, she shares a coupon code for the green stock. And I'd love to hear your um, feedback. Um, in particular, if you've had more success with the garden tower than I have, I would love to hear your methods and what's worked well for you. Um, if you have had failures with these products and want to share about that, you know, maybe we can help brainstorm that. Um, but I'd love to just have some conversation in the comments about uh, what works, what doesn't about these products or other products that you found that, that do a good job of creating a vertical space for your gardens. And, um, because this is a, the rare video on this channel that is specifically about gardening and garden products, uh, I would invite you to check out our other videos, which are about um, wellness and about practicing the system of Reiki, which is a Japanese um, meditation healing modality that does amazing things. So I welcome you to check out what else is happening on this channel. If you like it, go ahead and subscribe so you can check out whatever... I decide to share with you next. And until then, through your gardening adventures, through whatever life brings to you today, I hope that you are deeply provisioned for that journey, uh, which maybe includes the provision of some garden towers. Hope you're having a great day. Until next time, I love you. Bye-bye.